Hello everyone, today I want to talk about something that's a little controversial in math. Are differentials fractions or not? Can you treat them as fractions? I want to show you something that most of your teachers may have not shown you during your math education. So I'm gonna, we need to stop thinking about y as being the output of a function and x being the input, or I think you should stop thinking about dependent and independent variables for a moment and then just think of things in math as quantities and math doesn't care what a quantity is and math doesn't really care about saying that one is dependent on the other. In math, when you have an equation, you're just saying that you have two quantities that are related through some sort of mechanism and through a set of operations. For instance, let's say we have a quantity, I'm gonna say A, now let's say A is equal to B squared, okay? If I don't give you any information, you don't know what the independent or the dependent variable is, okay? And I think that's something important. Sometimes when you take a derivative and you have dy dx, we often think of y as the independent, as the dependent variable, and, of, and, of, and we think of x as the independent variable, and we say that, well, you can pick any value of x, and for that value, you're gonna have a y value. I think that notion is fine for most cases, but you also need to get used to the idea that you could also have dx dy. And honestly, math doesn't know, and when you're really doing the operations, it doesn't matter if x is supposed to be your input variable and y your output. You could also do dx dy, and that should still work, as long as you can relate x to y in some way. So here, for instance, I could do dA dB, and you know that's gonna give me uh, the derivative of A with respect to B, and that's gonna be 2B, okay? And here, most people would think, okay, well, we're saying that A is a function of B, and if you pick a B value, you're gonna get a, an A value, that's right, but could we also just, can we treat differentials like this? What if we wanna find B as a, the derivative of B with respect to A, okay? If you're thinking about these guys in terms of dependent and independent, I think you will not do this. You will not say, okay, if I want dB, dA, well, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say dA, dB to the negative one is equal to dB, dA, okay? Now, this is, this, is, this is like a crime sometimes in math, and some teachers might scream if you do math using this notation, because like right now what I said was, well, you can grab the derivative of A with respect to B and then just flip it, and that is gonna be the derivative of B with respect to A. If you're thinking in terms of dependent and independent variables, it feels wrong to do this, but if you're only thinking in terms of quantities, this makes sense, and I wanna show you that it makes sense, because we can write B based on our definition, based on this equation, which is a bidirectional relationship between A and B, we can write B as the square root, plus or minus the square root, it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna go with a plus, plus or minus the square root of A. Now, if we do D, B, D, A, what are we gonna get? Well, remember, this is the same as doing, this is the same as A, this is an A, A to the power of a half, so you're gonna have a half in front, and then a half minus one, that is gonna be one over a square root, okay? A one over a to the power of a half. And now, what is a to the power of a half? We know that it's equal to b, okay? Based on this equation, notice a the square root of a is equal to b. So then we can write this is one over two b, okay? And now, well, this is consistent with this. If we're saying that db dA is equal to the reciprocal of dA db, well, dA db is gonna be two b. And if you take the reciprocal of this, well, yeah, you're gonna get one over two b. So you can see that you can treat differentials as a fraction as long as, well, no, I, I don't wanna say as long as because I have not told you what are the conditions to treat differentials as fractions. I am just trying to present to you some way of thinking that doesn't involve the idea of dependent and independent variables because I think that's what stops most people from treating differentials in the most useful way. And when I say most useful way, I mean sometimes you're doing problems in which, uh, a problem in which you just, you wanna be able to find dBDA, but you have dADB. And for some reason, I've seen a lot of, the, uh, in, some, in some of my math homework, I've seen cases and people argue that, 
you can't do this. And there are some cases in which you can't, depending on the relationship between A and B, you may not be able to. For instance, if A is equal to arc sine of B, I'm pretty sure you just cannot flip the, the derivative like that. And they, I'm sure you cannot flip the differentials because that's a really non-linear and non-trivial relationship between A and B. But if you have something simple, which in many cases you do, in many cases you just have a non-linear function that's some power or that is maybe an ln, I, I don't know if for ln would work, maybe. In those cases, when you have something simple, you can check if this holds, okay? And in cases like this, it is my personal view that you can treat differentials as fractions, okay? And you can do any type of trickery that you want with them. This works really well. And for instance, I'm doing research in physics right now and a problem I encountered a few days ago was I had basically, I had a set of values that were the values representing my x-axis. I was doing a problem and I had values representing the x-axis. And I needed to convert these values, these x values, into time values, okay? And one way you can do that is, um, well, let's say you have a curve and this curve is gonna be y equals a function of x. And you have an object traveling along this curve. This is gonna have a velocity vector. One way in which you can relate x to t in which you can if you have a if you have the x point that represents it, this curve is going to be created by x and y points and if you want to go from x to time well you can say that dx dt so the rate of change of your x coordinate with respect to time is going to be your speed the, the magnitude of this vector times the so let me create a triangle here in this triangle actually let me do it here in this triangle um, you're going to have a local angle, alpha, and notice that if you take the cosine of the cosine of the local angle, v times the cosine of the local angle, alpha, um, that is going to give you the vertical, the horizontal component of speed, okay, which is dx dt. So you can do v, uh, dx dt is equal to cosine of the local angle, okay? And it turns out that v and cosine of alpha, you can write them in terms of x, so you can say v as a function, speed as a function of x, the magnitude as a function of x, and then cosine of the local angle as a function of x as well, that's supposed to be an x. So this is x, and well, if you want to find t, now here we go. We have a problem in physics, and in here, most people would argue that you have a dependent variable, which is x, and your independent variable is time. What if I want to find time, okay? I think most people would be angry if I do, well, if I want to find if I want to find time, something you can do is, well, just take the reciprocal of dx dt, which is going to be dt dx. And again, I know I must be offending some people right now. <laughs> I know this is kind of controversial in math. This is like a political opinion, even though math should not be based on opinions. This kind of depends on the way people think and on the, on, and, and on the different opinions that they have. So you have dt dx, and well, that is just going to be this quantity flipped on itself. So that is v as a function of x cosine of the local angle as a function of x. And then if you want to find t, well, you can treat that as a dif separable differential equation and then integrate dt and then integrate with respect to x the speed and then the cosine of the local angle like this, okay? And what what is this telling you? Well, this is telling you that if you want to find time as a function of x, you just need to integrate that guy, okay? Which turns out to be pretty nasty, and it turns out to be a non-elementary. Um, this is a you. This has no analytical solution. Um, it depends. Well, it actually depends on the definition of y. I guess if you have a really simple definition of y, um, you can put the speed. If you use conservation of energy, you can find the speed in terms of y and in terms of x. Because assuming you have an explicit definition for y as a function of x. And depending on that definition, this may be easy to compute or not. Uh, in the case that I'm researching, it is by far not easy to compute. Uh, so this is this, yep. Now, is this fair? Is this good math? So far, I use this to write a computer program that would give me a, a value, uh, it would give me an array of time values given an array of x values. And so far, I have gotten results that make sense physically. So I am going to guess that in this case, doing this trick, just flipping the differential works. 
And here I'm just treating dx and dt as fractions, okay? And this, this could have not worked, but based on the results that I obtained in my research, I get something that makes physical sense. So I'm guessing that this works, okay? And I'm sure this works because if it didn't work, my code would have crashed and I, and I would have been taking square roots of negative numbers. And if this were not a, if this were not a mathematically sound thing to do, other things would have broken down as I made computations using this equation, and that did not happen. So I am gonna argue things like this can be done depending on the situation. And honestly, it's hard to know when you can do it. So in my view, in my personal opinion, I think we should treat differentials as fractions all the time. And if we see that something fails, then we can say, okay, in this case, this relationship that you can just flip the differential or you can treat it as a, as a fraction, in this case, it doesn't work, okay? In cases like that, I think then it is safe to say, no, this is not a, a fraction. But I think for most cases, if I could redo math education, I think I would teach people to treat differentials as a fraction, but to always be sure to check other indicators or other, if you assume that this differential is a fraction, what are the mathematical consequences of that assumption? If you get things that don't make sense, then your initial assumption was incorrect. And that means that for this specific scenario, your differentials are not a fraction, okay? It's like differentials are like a superposition of states. And well, you know, you, it could either be a fraction or it could not be, and you will not know until you measure it. Um, so you gotta, you know, you gotta make some experiments and observations, mathematical observations to see if differentials are a fraction in a particular problem or not, okay? This is just something that I wanted to touch upon. I think it's one of the coolest de debates in math. And I think it's pretty interesting to see what people think. I think no one should get angry about this. If you totally disagree with me, leave a comment and explain why you think what I did here is totally garbage. But don't get angry. This is just, this is just my opinion on something related to math. Um, this has probably no major consequences. So there's no need to get angry, okay? But I thought this is useful. And if you thought this is useful to let me know, because I would like to know what other people think about this, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And I wish to see you in the following one. Bye.